Hello, this video is created because a lot of folks who wish to try Commodore 64 keep asking the same questions from me over and over again. Basically, it's not a big problem for me, but uh, there must be a smarter way. So this short tutorial should answer all the basic questions. So if you are interested in Commodore 64 gaming and you don't know where to start, maybe it can help you. Ok, let's start with false idea number 1. I cannot play Commodore 64 games because I don't have a real machine. Well, you don't need a real machine. Well, in 2023, maybe, even the majority of Commodore 64 game developers use uh, emulators. There are lots of good ones and regardless of your main machine, be it Windows based, Linux based or Mac, most probably you will find a fine emulator for the actual system. There are lots of them, things like Frodo, CCS64, OSX, or maybe the most commonly used one, Vice. I show you this because I used this one for music making and playing my old favorite games. Ok, false idea number 2. Commodore 64 games are not available anymore. Well, everything is available online. I would highlight uh, three sites. The first one is c64.com. You can find an ample of games there. The second one is CSDB, that stands for Commodore Scene Database. You can find everything there that was ever cracked, modded, trained, fixed, and an ample of new creations like demos, music, graphics, tools, literally everything. So the third site would be Lemon64. You can find no games there, but you can find a lot of reviews and information about all the games ever released. So that's all about it. Pretty simple. You just find an emulator for your operation system and find the actual game on these sites. So let's see the emu of my choice, Vice. If you are interested in gaming only, then you should use version 3 and above. If you wish to create music, then I would recommend version 2 because it has a more accurate sound. But for gaming, it doesn't matter. It's best to download it from CSDB, link below. After unpacking and installing, try to find the folder Ben. You can find about a dozen of uh, old CBM machines like Plus4, PET, C16 and so on, but you only need X64SC. Just click click and you are there. These new versions are configured to start perfectly right out of the box. So if your thing is playing only, then most probably you don't have to touch the settings. The default will work fine. From this point it is ready to play, but before talking about uh, image files, I would recommend uh, one simple thing. Just click preferences and settings. There you go, input devices and joystick. There you can configure your PC keyboard as a game controller, but I wouldn't recommend it. Using a gamepad is just the better way. So if you have an installed and configured gamepad in your system, you can use it here. Just set it and go. Please mind that uh, Commodore 64 had two joysticks, not one. Some of the games use port 1 and some of the games use port 2. You can switch these ports just like any time by a simple shortcut Alt and J. To play games you need only this. Let's move on. There are four different types of files, so called image files. If the data was converted from a floppy disk, then this file format is D64. If the medium was a tape, then it's a T64 file. If it was a cartridge, you know, the Nintendo way, then it's a CRT file. And finally, there are simple and single program files, called PRGs. There are other data formats, but uh, these are the four most common files you can find if you want to play a game. Most probably, and in most of the cases, you can auto-start them, just by dragging the file into your vice. Easy peasy. Then you can of course dock the actual image files through the file menu. And there is a new, pretty smart way to attach anything to vice. It's called Smart Attach. 
The shortcut is Alt plus A. It's pretty useful if you have multiple single files on a disk and all of them are separate games because you can fit multiple games to a disk image. So that's almost everything. I guess uh, in 90% of the cases you will be able to play games. Still, I would talk a little about the old school way of loading programs. As far as my experience goes, the great majority of image files are disk files, D64s. So after attaching the disk image, you must tell the machine that uh, it should find the data on the disk drive. So very simply, if you want to read the list of files on the disk, just type this text and hit return or enter on your PC keyboard. It will read the so-called directory. You can check the content by the command list. In the case of an ample of files, you will quickly run out of the screen. So you can stop the listing anytime by the key escape or run stop on Commodore 64. If you have the right file name, you just type this and it will load into the system. After that, just type in run and hit enter. Okay, before saying goodbye, I will show you a couple of tricks that you may find useful if you wish to use the old school way. Tip 1. If you want to load the very first file, just type star and it will load the very first file on the disk. Tip 2. You don't have to type in the complete file name. Just use the first three characters and then add a star, just like this. Tip 3. If you don't feel like typing a lot, then just move the cursor to the actual file on the list and just move the cursor to the end of the line and type in comma 8 comma 1. Tip 4. Basic commands have shorter form, just like the first letter of the actual command, then shift and the second letter. So just hit L, shift and O. That's the short form of load. That's the same for run and list, all you ever need to start a game. Tip 5. You can auto start files. Just be aware that the actual run line should be empty. So just navigate the cursor to the end of the line and hit shift and run stop on Commodore 64. That's the end key on a PC keyboard. So I guess that's all if you just want to play. See you somewhere in time.